Happy Apple Core Homestead. Today we're going to talk all about the purple clover. You may also know it as the red clover. Those two names are used interchangeably, but it's the same thing. I think the first thing we're going to do today is head on outside so that you can see what it looks like growing in the wild. We'll also talk about how to harvest it properly, and when we get back, we will talk about all of the different medicinal uses. Make sure to stay tuned till the end because there are some things you should be aware of, some words of caution for you. Let's head out. Here is my little patch of purple clover. As you can see, um, the season is just about over, but I am going to grab a few more. And when you harvest them, you just want to nip off the flowers and leave the rest of the plant. And of course, any of them that are starting to get brown like that, we'll just go ahead and leave those there. Some people say the best time to harvest purple clover is in the morning while the dew is still attached to the flower. I personally just harvest it whenever I can get my hands on it and whenever it's convenient for me. I don't think that that's a deal breaker that it has to be in the morning, so just keep that in mind when you're out harvesting yours. The flower is completely edible. You can eat it fresh, you can dry it, you can tincture it. Lots of different ways to use the purple clover. I'm going to jump into all of the health benefits for each of those things right now. I think we're going to discuss the salve first and I'll put a link up here on how to, just a basic salve recipe, it will work for this application 100%. Purple clover is amazing for eczema, psoriasis, wounds, rashes, acne. It's even good for uh, protecting you against UV damage and also for aging if you've already gotten a little bit too much sun, like, like me, I think I'm gonna add a purple clover to my anti-aging serum. Now let's move on to the medicinal benefits of a purple clover tincture and a tea. Uh, all of these health benefits apply to both the tincture and a tea. So tinctures are made with alcohol. I will put a link up here on how to make a tincture. Those instructions will be exactly what you need to make a basic purple clover tincture. Teas, on the other hand, are good for folks who do not want to consume any alcohol, and all of these benefits that I'm about to mention work for the tea as well. You can do a tea with fresh purple clover or dried, either which way. And so if you're going to make a fresh purple clover tea, you'll want to use three of those big purple flower heads with one cup of water, steep it for 10 to 20 minutes, maybe even 30 minutes and then go ahead and consume it at that point. If you want to use dried, go ahead and use three teaspoons of dried uh, purple clover flour and steep that in your hot water, you know, for up to a half an hour and consume it at that point. If you decide instead to make a tincture, then you will want to take uh, approximately one to three dropperfuls up to three times per day. Please keep in mind, I am not a doctor and I am not your doctor, so do your research. Talk to your naturopath if you feel comfortable doing that and start slow so you can determine whether or not your body has any kind of disagreement with that particular herb. Purple clover is absolutely excellent for both male and female reproductive health. And what's great about the purple clover is it does not reduce testosterone levels. It is great for protecting against prostate cancer, and some even say it is a cure for cancer. You heard that right, folks. There are tons of herbs that fight and battle cancer. It is so important that we research these things that God has already given us so that we can be in control of our own healing. If you are a woman of a certain age, You'll be happy to know that this is excellent for menopausal symptoms and perimenopausal symptoms such as night sweats and hot flashes. Purple clover is also a blood thinner and a blood purifier. So if you're looking to purify your system, this is a good thing to take. I would caution you though, because of its blood thinning abilities, please use caution if you're going into surgery soon or if you are taking any kind of blood thinning medication already. You heard me talk about the cancer connection with purple clover and lots of other herbs. 
Because of the estrogen-like qualities of the purple clover, you are not going to want to take this, especially not in high doses or for long periods of time, if you have an estrogen-sensitive cancer. That was short and sweet, right? A little bit of a rapid fire video for you today. That's not all the information that there is out there on the purple clover, but I hope it's enough to get you started, get you excited about foraging your own medicinal herbs to take care of your health and your family's health. If you feel led to support me in the work I do to share this information with all of you, please consider becoming a member or down in my description box, I have a link to my Etsy shop, which is full of all kinds of very effective herbal medications, all made from herbs that I make right here organically on my homestead. Thank you so much for watching everybody and I will see you next time. Bye.